Hi guys, so I wanted to talk about uh, something I've been looking into recently uh, in regards to a new game concept. Uh, I want to have another game before Synergy next week. Synergy is uh, a student exhibition for my school. Every discipline is going to be on the rooftop of SAE uh, showing off their stuff at the end of this trimester next week. Uh, so I want to make a mobile game and I want to make as much game as possible in the week I have uh, and one method a lot of game developers uh, use to create more game is procedural generation. Uh, this is Francisco R.A.'s uh, blog on the pros and cons of procedural generation in his eyes. Uh, have a read of it, I'll have the link in the description. But what I take away from it is you really have to weigh up the pros and cons because if you're looking to do something complicated with procedural generation, it can be a real sanity and time sinkhole. Uh, and I think for an indie game dev that just wants to make more game, if you don't keep it simple, you you end up with uh, with something so complicated you just make a mess of it. Francisco has a great blog at procgen.wordpress.com. Uh, he covers most of what you need to know about the idea of procedural generation. Uh, I think the best read is just uh, this blog on the many faces of procedural generation. It's part three in his classification system. I really like that he's just divided the use of procgen into three types and that's purely deterministic, uh, deterministic at load time, and non-deterministic. And so we'll start from the top. We all know No Man's Sky. Uh, everyone plays in the same universe because they all start with the same seed that generates every single thing that you see uh, in the game. Uh, just the same as this 96 kilobyte game, K Krieger. Uh, really cool. Uh, everything in that game is procedurally generated. Uh, assets, maybe even sounds. I mean, it's it's crazy. Uh, but that's that's a huge undertaking. Uh, quite a few smart guys worked on each of those projects for quite a long while, and they probably tore their hair out in the process. I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon. I'm not saying it's not on the horizon, but uh, I need to. <laughs> make that distinction and and realize why I need to to shy away from it. Uh, the next is deterministic at load time generation, which is where based on inputs potentially at the start of the game, such as just hitting generate random uh, world, you get a different playthrough every time. So it's great for roguelikes like the binding of Isaac uh, and Minecraft even has an option to input the seed so you can get the same world that your friend loaded. Uh, and finally, non-deterministic generation is the closest to just random number generation. You've got a bunch of assets that are, that are being spawned in, in a controlled way within parameters, but, but there's no way to determine what result you're going to get. And so it needs as much testing as every other if you don't keep it simple. So this is the kind of generation I'm going to be doing in my simple, um, I can't call it an endless runner, but it's a side view scroller uh, where the pickups and hazards are generated randomly, but there is a goal. Uh, hazards will increase as the pickups decrease and finally after an amount of time I'll spawn something that can win the game. Uh, so I'll talk more about that soon but just really wanted to 
outline the three different definitions of of deterministic generation uh, because if you don't know exactly what you're doing and why you could potentially be falling into that sinkhole so yeah if you do want to try your hand at some deterministic procedural generation I think you should start with this tutorial here Sebastian Leg offers the most comprehensive yet succinct tutorials they're very in-depth uh, but you'll come out with a great understanding even if you just follow his code um, but yeah I can't think of any game concept that I would use randomly generated caves for at this point so I mean making a game system work with a randomly generated environment is very difficult you're going to need to play with those rules so much it's it's going to be uh it's going to be hard so if that's if that sounds a bit silly then i recommend manually creating stuff with pro builder uh i haven't used it much i just played around with an earlier version a while ago but it's great for prototyping 2D or 3D levels. Uh, I mean, if it's not 2.5D, just using Unity's, um, I believe it's got Sprite to Mesh or something. I think it uses the alpha of your sprites to generate mesh that you can make a collider. So that's pretty cool. That's likely what I'm doing in the next game. Uh, and of course, if the free version is it enough it really is worth the money to get one of these you'll be using them for prototypes potentially for the rest of your career and another good one here is Procore so Pro Builder and Procore uh, there is another one called World Builder that's free uh, it's pretty simple though you use Unity Terrain to generate uh, something you can place trees on the cool thing about these things is you can usually randomly generate something and then tweak that so you start with something natural and then tweak it in the editor even while you're playing um, at least with world builder you can uh, yeah so keep it laser focused you know you you won't have a portfolio if you don't have finished games that do everything that you wanted them to do Right, so that's all I have to talk about in regards to PCG for now, but uh, check out my next video um, on my concept for my non-deterministically generated 2D scroller. Thanks for watching.